10 ways to create your course outline with a Google document, Google Sheet, Checklist, Trello, Asana, Udemy, Thinkific, Teachable, Keynote, and Finder. So we got two tools by Google, three free project management tools, three platforms to upload online courses, and two desktop applications. Let's do it. Creating your course outline with Google Documents. Google Documents is free, and Udemy provides a free template. All the links to these templates will be included in the description of this lecture or on a separate lecture with links, with a PDF with links. So it's very simple. Udemy provides you with a template where not only you have the opportunity to create your outline, but you also can include details like your course title, the course goals, what are students going to accomplish at the end of the course, who should take this course, and what are the requirements to take this course. Now, the way that this template is created, it has a table, and you have four columns with the section name, lecture name, lecture type, and lecture description. Now, sometimes sections are also referred to as chapters or modules, and a typical course will have five chapters or modules, and inside each chapter or module, there will be five lectures, and typically the lecture type will most likely be video type. So it'll be either you talking to the screen, your screen being recorded with a tool like ScreenFlow or Camtasia, or a combination of both your face or your talking head with the slide or your screen being recorded at the same time using a tool like ScreenFlow or Camtasia. And then you have the lecture description. Right, so this is very simple. It's just a document with that. And to create a new uh, le uh, row, all you have to do is press tab and you can keep creating more and more rows and more sections or chapters by just, by just typing this. Something I really like to do is be being able to keep track of my progress. All I have to do is click on the cell that I want to change the background and then here on more I can click on the background color bucket and change it to a color. For color coding I usually like to use yellow or orange for the lectures that I'm working on, green for lectures that have been completed, and red for lectures that need work or I'm stuck at for whatever reason. So let's say I've completed it, I can just mark it as done this way. That way, as I keep recording my course, I know how far have I gone and what needs to, needs to work and what has been accomplished. All right, there you go. Creating your course outline using Google Sheets. Google Sheets is a free online software provided by Google. It looks like Excel, pretty much the same. And here are two examples. The first one is a vertical layout for an outline, and the second one is a horizontal layout for a course outline. So the vertical layout is very similar to the Google Doc sample that I showed you. This one was provided originally by Udemy. And except that it allows you more flexibility because it's easier to rearrange lectures like this just by dragging and dropping from the number of the row and also allows you to insert new rows just by right clicking on the number of the row and clicking either insert below or insert above above and then you just can create another lecture right like that and you can use color coding as well you can just select this lecture and say okay if it's, if i'm working on it is orange if it's completed is green and if it's if it needs work if there's something that i'm stuck with i can just make it red i can make it the, i can make the background red all right there you go very simple if you want to make it faster or, or different there's you can also use conditional conditional formatting just right click on the top of the column and click conditional formatting and in this case i'm using the three color three colors to 
to indicate whether the lecture is completed, I'm working on it, or, or I'm stuck on it, and I'm just using one, if I'm working on it, two, it's green for it's completed, and three, sorry, and zero, if it needs, if I'm stuck on it, all right? Very easy to set that up. Just right click, condition formatting, you click create a new, uh, create a new rule, and then format if the number is equal to a specific value. So we could say three now, and then we just change the background color to whatever we, we would like to, right? Once you click do that, you have a new rule. Every time I add a three, it's gonna become that color, all right? So that's how you do it. Now for the horizontal version of Google Sheets, horizontal course layout, this is what I've been using actually for many years because it allows me to see my entire course in one shot. Whereas the vertical options, you have to scroll down. I'm very lazy, I don't wanna scroll down. I wanna see my overall progress in one shot. So this is how I've been doing it for several years. And the difference is that each chapter or module or section represents one column. So the top of the column here, the headings, are the, the, would be the name of your sections of chapter or chapters or modules, right? And underneath each heading, you'll have the lectures. So a typical course has five modules and five lectures under each module, and then a quiz or a worksheet at the end of it, right? And use the same thing. Use color coding to mark anything that is done and anything you're working on, it can go orange. And if you're stuck on something specifically, you can make it red. And then you know exactly how much you've progressed, right? So let's say I'm almost, you know, 80% done. I go like this and that's, I'm pretty much done. And I know I have to work on that, right? The main issue with this is that there's not a lot of information I can add for each specific lecture, right? Whereas here I have the ability to add a description or any comments. Here I don't have that. But you still can do it. There's two options to do that. You can go to insert and add a comment or a note. I typically add a note. And many times I, I would say what the date is. And I say, this is my note. And there you go, the note is there. Very, very crude way of adding a note, but if I wanted to remember a specific thing about that lecture, I just can add a uh, note that way. All right. Creating a course outline using CheckVist, CheckVist.com. It's a free online tool to create checklists that is very simple to use, clean, and fast to use as well. I love it because it has a lot of different shortcuts. But it, the main difference between using something like Google Docs or Google Sheets is that this is a to-do list. So it allows you to set reminders to assign tasks. Uh, you have a lot more features, obviously, if you uh, up upgrade to the premium version, but this is the, the simpler free version that allows you to have unlimited lists. And all you have to do is go to list and create new list, and then you can create your course outline, right? And you can hear, you can see here as well, you can open them, and you can also mark them as done, right? So if I go here to my first lecture, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard, and then you can press space bar to mark something as done, right? You can also use numbers, the numbers on your keyboard, to change the background or the text color. So let's say the same uh, strategy I, I was using before, where you know you have this color. So that could be say that could mean that it's done, done, right? So different colors that you can use there. You can uh, decide how you want to use these colors, and or space bar just to mark something as completed. Now because it's a to-do list also has nice little features like show progress counter. So while you're creating your course, you can see how the total number of tasks. So in this case, there's 25 tasks, 25 lectures, right? And I completed four of them, so 16% completed, right? It's really, really neat. You can mark an entire module as done or section by selecting the module and pressing the space bar there. And now we are nine out of 25, or we just can undo some of those 
We can use color coding again. All right, that needs work. That has been completed, right? Etc. Etc. Now, it's very easy to move uh, to do list or to do items or items up and down. All you have to do is press Command and the arrow keys up and down, and you can see how the module three now is easily being moved up and down. You can use the the arrow keys left and right to go inside a list, right? So I'm going right, left, right, to open, left, to, to close. Very easy to use, boom. And there's a lot more commands, by the way, that you can use because this is a quite powerful to-do list software. I, a lot of people don't know about check, checklist.com. It's not that popular, but it's extremely powerful to create to-do list and I find out to create out, uh, outlines as well or take notes or something like that. For example, let's say we want to create another module, module six, okay. And now to indent, indent, we just use tab or shift tab to unindent. So now that is part of module six. This could be lecture one on module six, press enter to have it in. We can also create sub lectures if you wanted to, or if we wanted to make any notes, we can add them as well here, notes. And if you forget by any, which is gonna happen, like you can, you can use the keyboard cheat sheet here of the general ones, right? Ba, 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 ba. Now let's, I'll show you how to add a note as well. To add a note, all you have to do is, let's select, for example, this lecture and click on the three vertical dots here. And you can see the shortcut for a note is NN. And we can add a note. Note goes here and you just press enter and the note has been added. There you go. You can hide the notes or show the notes. Several people can be working on the same outline as well because this is collaboration software, so it's great to collaborate, all right? You can do neat things like make this bold if you want to, right? So you can see that, you know, you can make it look pretty as well. So it has some limited formatting options but I find it very, very clean. You can share, you can change colors, you can mark as done, anything that you, basically everything that you need in order to keep track of your, create your course outline and keep track of your progress, both. Checkvist.com. Creating your course outline using Trello. Trello.com is a free online project management tool that allows you to collaborate, create to-do lists, in a very visual way. It allows you to create columns, which are just lists, are referred as lists, and then under each column, you can create tasks, which are called cards. You can click on any card, and then you have more contextual information about the card, where you can add a description to that card, comment, assign it. You can add an internal checklist, a due date, an attachment, add different labels, add members. It's very, very powerful. And it's free. You can also upgrade to a premium version where you have extra, extra features, but the free version has absolutely everything you, that you need to do to create a course outline. So this arrangement that you see, several columns, is very similar to my, the one that I created with Google Sheets, which each column represents a module, a chapter, or a section of your online course. And, there, and then underneath its, its, its heading, you have the lectures. So this will be a template for a typical five module course with five lectures per module and a quiz at the end, right? Uh, you can rearrange the order of things. You can move lectures from one place to the other. You can rearrange them easily up and down. It's very visual, it's drag and drop, very simple to use, but it's very powerful as well. Kind of like checklist, this check, check list, uh, sorry, check list, it has a bunch of other features. Uh, interesting feature it has is that you can create, if you click on this lecture, lecture 01, you can create a checklist inside the card. So let's say that you want to make sure that for each lecture you complete these six steps. 
that you research the lecture, you create the slides, record it, edit, encode it, and upload the lecture. Then you can just go and click as you just to make sure that you're doing all of that. Once it's completed, as you can see here on the background, there's a little indicator saying that there's a checklist. There's five out of six items completed. When I click the sixth one, it turns green, showing that it has been completed. We also can use color coding either here by clicking uh, labels and then you select a color. So let's say that it, that's been completed and we're using green for completed or orange for working on or red for for in its we're stuck on that uh, lecture. Now the thing is you can add several ones. So basically probably you only want one one. And the other thing is you can use shortcuts. So they go in order. So one, if I click, click one, that would add a green label. And if I click on again, it's like a toggle. It's a, so it turns off, right? Three for orange, four for red. You can also add, this is really neat. You can select with your arrow keys any lecture. And if you press the number, let's say one, 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 three, and I, I go right here now, and I can go one, one, three. Oh, that needs, I'm stuck on that one, right? So quickly you can see exactly how much you've progressed. The advantage of using Trello too is that in one shot, you pretty much get to see your entire progress and your entire course outline. And I think it's really good also because if you're doing quite a bit of research before you do a lecture, you can add a lot of contextual information. Whereas in Check, Check Vist and Google Docs or Google Sheets, you're restricted to the amount of contextual information you can add to a lecture. Here, you can add pictures, you can add attachments, comments. So all the research that goes in, that you put into creating the content for this lecture, it can be also part of, of your outline. So this is like an enhanced, smart, actionable outline. It's kind of like taking a typical simple outline to the next level. And you also can have due dates and, and assign it to people. And really, really, really powerful. And it's free software being used by millions of people now. They highly recommend it. Creating your course outline using Asana. Asana.com, also a free online project management software that has paid features, but about 80 to 85 percent of all the features are free more than you need to create a simple course outline as you can see here all you need to do is create a new project so you're tr you're basically treating your course outline as a project which it is because it's a project to create your course this is exactly what you're gonna have to do right so you create a project and then for each chapter module or section of your course which a course typically has you know, five, six sections or modules, then you're gonna create a, a task, but these tasks are speci special. To create a section, and this is really simple to do. All you have to do, if you wanna create, make a task into a section, all you have to do is add a column, column, and it becomes a section. Uh, if you want to create or you just can click here, create new tasks, and there you go, or create or add section. And you can see here, it says new section, but if I delete the column, guess what happens? It becomes a task. Section, task, section, task. All right. And then I can delete by just clicking on the task and I click on the three dots here, and you can use either tab backspace or do it manually like that. So if I do tab backspace, it's going to delete it as well, All right? So Asana is a very powerful online project management software. It allows you to assign tasks. Uh, you, you can have a calendar if you want to with uh, all the tasks all the task due dates, see your overall progress, add attachments, etc., etc. It doesn't have the drag and drop feature that Trello has where you can easily move tasks from one list to another uh, this way. Uh, 
it's, I mean, it, do, it does it, but it's not as visual, right? So a lot of people prefer Trello because it looks like a post, post-it board, and a lot of people keep track of their projects this way. In fact, that's, if you want to do this in the analog way, what a lot of people have is a bunch of post-its, and each post-it represents a lecture, right? But the problem is you cannot share that digitally online. That's the, the main issue, right? Uh, but here you can do something similar, which is you can drag and drop lectures up and down like that. All right, uh, and then you can, anytime you click on any specific lecture, you can see the contextual information, comment, and see the changes and all of that. Uh, similar to Trello, you can create sub lists inside of a lecture. So all you have to do is click, create on this subtask, tab S in this case, and then you can create new check items right there. So I actually have done that for lecture one of module one and I have six different check checklist items for each lecture. In this case it would be research the lecture, create the lecture, record the lecture, edit the lecture, encode the lecture, and upload the lecture. One of the main issues I see with Asana, and I'm sure that eventually they will fix, or you know, maybe the pay version has something similar, is color coding. I like to have a quick visual way of identifying my progress. And as you can see, I can do that easily on Excel. I can do that easily on Checklist. I can do that easily on Trello. But unfortunately, I cannot easily change the color of any of my tasks here as far as I know. I can, I have lots of options here, but I don't see a way, simple way, that I can add a color, color coding to it, right? So, oh well, I mean, I can mark it as done, right? Blah, I've done it, I've done it. So I guess that is a way of visually seeing what I am. But truly the main issue I see is that Tasks have only a dual status, which is either it's done or it's not done. You don't have an in-between or in-between states, right? Like working on or I'm stuck on, on it. So on Asana, you either completed something or not. And the reality is that tasks usually go through a process. I mean, for simplicity, it could be just a binary situation, like done or not done. But I like to also see where I'm stuck. So if I could easily see in red, Hey, yeah, these are the lectures that I try to finish and there's something that I, I'm struggling with and I can see that in red. I know you can use tags. To add a new tag, just click on any task and then go to this symbol uh, or use the shortcut tab plus T and then you can add a tag, right? So in this case, it will be a status related tag. So in this, uh, let's say I wanna track all the tasks that I'm stuck with. So that one and I go here and I'm stuck with lecture 5 of module 2 or lecture 4 of module 1 and now if if I want to just look at those lectures that I'm stuck with I click on the stuck label and then I get to see those ones right I just open it and all the all all these lectures need work now the main issue with it is that although it is very flexible and you can add multiple tags, is that it's not color coded. So I guess you only you only see gray, and it's nice when you can use colors like red or green or orange. So visually, on a quick glance at your entire project, you can see what needs work, what has been completed, etc. Right? It's not a big issue but I think that's one of the drawbacks of Asana. So there you go. This is how you create a course outline using Asana. Creating your course outline using udemy.com or udemy.com. There's two ways of saying it. I don't think there's an official one. So Udemy is a huge online course marketplace where you can upload courses for free and sell them. Udemy does a lot of the marketing efforts for you. So all you have to worry about is course creation. And I mean, it helps if you know a little bit of marketing, right? But it's a very robust platform to create online courses and to create an outline. 
Now, the great thing about using a platform like Udemy is that if you create your outline here, you save a step, right? Otherwise, you have to create your outline separate from Udemy, and then you have to replicate it here. Now, Udemy is not a project management tool. It's not a to-do list. It's not optimized for course outline creation, but it works also. So if you're lazy and don't wanna do as much effort, just go create a course and then go to curriculum and you can start adding your sections and lectures or modules and lessons, whichever way you wanna call them. To add a section, you just click on add section, give it a name and add the section. And then to create a lecture, the same thing, click add lecture. You can also add quizzes or a coding exercise. Just click on that. Then you can upload a video or a PDF or whichever materials you wanna teach your students and click add lecture. Now the only main issue I find with Udemy is that once you create a new lecture, it gets added to the bottom of your list of all the lectures. So in this case, this course, how to create an awesome demo video for your business, has 98 lectures, it's a big course. So imagine I wanna create a new lecture on the first section, that means that lecture is gonna be added to the very end of my entire list and now I have to drag it and scroll all the way, hopefully without losing it, and now I can put it on the top section. So, other tools like Thinkific or Teachable allow you to create new lectures within each, within each section. The other good thing is that you can have this as uh, unpublished. So if you have this unpublished, it's orange. So you have color coding, right? And it's basically the sim similar color coding as the one that I've been using so far, where you can see here, uh, orange is for something that I'm working on, right? So the same thing here, if you're working on it, it's not published, it's gonna be orange, so you can easily visually see what needs to be worked on, right? You don't have the red coding option, which I like to identify lectures that I'm stuck on. But anyways, this can save you one step. There you go, udemy.com. Creating your course outline using Thinkific Dot com. Thinkific is a online course hosting platform. It's not a marketplace like Udemy. Here you can upload courses, but you have to pay a fee in order to use all their features. And the marketing is up to the course creator, up to the online teacher. Now it's a very robust platform as well, and it allows you to create an outline too, right? The way you do that, you just have to create a new course then you go to curriculum and you start adding your sections or chapters in this case. And then there, under each chapter, you can add content, right? So you can give yourself, okay, new uh, chapter, then you save it and you can, you cannot set it to draft, so it's immediately published, but now you can add content in several formats. Video being the typical one, and then quizzes at the end of chapters is, is normal, right? You don't have color coding, so you don't know exactly what needs to be done, but if you are working on a specific chapter, sorry, lecture, you can set it to draft, and then you have this little pencil icon indicating that this is, this is draft, so it's not being published, all right? So that's how it works. Now, the advantage over Udemy is that is when you create a new lecture or content, it doesn't get added to the bottom of your entire curriculum. It gets added within, and this is neat, within the chapter that you're working on, right? You also then can re easily rearrange your chapters and the content within your chapters by just dragging and dropping that way. All right, so there you go, thinkific.com. Creating your course outline using teachable.com. So Teachable is similar to Thinkific, is an online course hosting platform that is self-service, that is paid if you wanna have all the features, 
and where if you want to sell courses, you're going to have to do your own marketing, but you have more control. You have access to all your student email addresses. You can build your email list. You have a lot more flexibility on how do you design your landing pages. You basically can create a full-fledged website to host your online courses and have full control over it. You can also create a curriculum for your course and as similar to Thinkific, you can create modules or sections or chapters. Every platform calls them differently. And then under each module, you can create lectures. You just click create, create new lecture. And there you go. Now, these are set to draft. But if I were to click on that and add some text or whatever, add text, I can publish it. And when I go back, you can see it's not grayed out anymore. So the only color coding we have here is from grayed out and the little indicator that is on draft mode and the draft label gets taken away and now it's white, right? There's no other status, but we also can drag and drop among lectures among the modules and we can also rearrange the modules as well. So the advantage of using a platform like Udemy, Thinkific, or Teachable, or Kajabi Next, or any other online course platform that allows you to create a curriculum is that it may save you a step because you don't have to recreate the curriculum again. You have less flexibility. These tools are not designed as a project management tool like Trello, or Asana, or Checklist. It doesn't have as much control in terms of color coding and rearranging as Excel does. But if you were to do, if, if you're using any of these other options, you still will have to recreate that eventually on the platform that you choose to host your course. So there you go, that's another option, teachable.com. Creating your course outline using Keynote for Mac. So what I like about using Keynote is that a lot of my courses, if not all, the lectures are created with slides, with Keynote slides. You can use PowerPoint or Prezi or any other presentation software. But the main presentation software for Macintosh computers is called Keynote. It's a very affordable. You can buy it at the App Store and allows you to create beautiful presentations, which then you can record using software like ScreenFlow, which is the, the software I'm using right now to record this lecture, and tools like Camtasia, which works for both Windows and Mac. ScreenFlow is exclusive to the Mac Macintosh platform. Now, why would you want to use Keynote to create your course outline? The reason why is because it will save you one step. If you create your course outline anywhere else, like let's say on a spreadsheet or Trello or Asana, what happens is that then you're gonna, if you're gonna create, if you're gonna use slides for your lecture presentations, then you're going to have to recreate the same outline on Keynote, right? So if you are lazy and don't wanna do that, you can use the system. It's less flexible because you cannot assign tasks, you cannot use uh, complex color coding, so it's not designed specifically to create course outlines, but for a simple course, or if you're lazy, Keynote is the way. And this is the way uh, I've seen it being used, and I'm using it actually for a course right now, which is, this is the way you do it. You create a main slide for each module, chapter, or section, right? So the equivalent of this, right, where I have here five modules in this case, or on the horizontal version, I have these modules. So those be those would be my main keynote slides, right? So in this case, I have seven, right? I have the welcome one, the fundamentals, and then five modules, which is typical for most online courses. So there you go. And then you can nest slides inside each main slide, right? So the lectures inside each module would be nested. And to nest something is very simple. You just create a new lecture, sorry, a new slide, and then you can literally drag it inside the 
inside the top slide, which co would correspond to the uh, to the module, right? So, for example, we're here in this module two course validation, and here is something that works really well, and I like to do. I'm just rearranging here some slides to show to make a point. Is that for each video, this is this is what Visual is going to help you create the course outline. Each video, the slide is going to have a color that is very distinctive from the actual slides that make up the lecture. Let me explain. So right now, everything in this case, everything that has a dark background, in this case, a checkboard a background, I know it's going to be an independent video. And each video lecture has can have several slides inside, right? So, for example, if we go here to this module, the module 01 fundamentals, we have a video, it's called why would you want to create an online course? So that would be one single video lecture, okay? But inside that video lecture, I'm gonna have a slide, which is this one, which is in this case is animated, right? But it, that, that this, this is another case, another video with several slides. So what you can see here quickly, visually, is that everything that has a dark background is gonna be a separate video and everything that doesn't have a dark back background, in this case, it's gonna be a light background, it's inside one of these videos. So this video, when I record it, when I press play, these are all the slides that I'm gonna be playing in order while I record it. So it works really well because visually I know exactly how many videos I'm gonna be recording and what's gonna go inside each video lecture. I really like this. Now the only problem is that there is not an easy way to mark a video lecture as completed. So the trick that I'm using for Keynote, as you can see here on the bottom right corner, there's a little blue triangle. Now this blue triangle is indicating that there is a transition, a slight transition. Right? There's an animation applied to this slide, so when it plays back, there's a transition between this slide and the next one. Right? So if there's no transition, there is no blue triangle. So in this case, I'm just adding manually a transition by clicking on the lecture, on the lecture title card, and then I go to animate, add effect, and I just I add in whichever whichever transition I want, so I can see the blue triangle, as you can see, right? So if I remove it, change to none, it disappears. And this is a quick visual way for me to identify which lectures I've recorded and which ones I haven't recorded. It's just like little trick, right? So at the end, I wanna see all the slides with a dark background, to have a blue triangle, that way I know they've been completed. So in this case, I haven't completed this course, so as you can see, there's a bunch of lectures here that need to be recorded. So there you go, this may save you a step, specifically if you're recording a course that uses slides. If it's just you talking to the screen and they're not slides, then obviously you're not gonna be using Keynote. But if you plan to use Keynote, this is a great, to a great system to create your outline and saving you, saving you one step. There you go. Creating your course outline using Finder. Finder is the file browser that comes with Macintosh computers. And very simple to use. You just open it, you click on the Finder icon, and then you can create a series of folders. In this case, this is for an existing course that has five modules, module zero being the welcome module, which is also a typical module to have. And I've created a folder for each module and under each module I have the lectures. So these are actually recorded lectures, right? So let's say I wanted to create a new module. So I just create a new folder. You can right click and select new folder and create new folder like this, new folder, right click new folder. And now inside this new module, I can start adding the lectures. Now, if the lectures are not recorded and you just wanna remember which lectures you need to create, 
what you can do is just go and click on text edit and create a new text file and then just save it there and that will be module 6 lecture 1 text file you can uh, open it and then you can add a description to it or whatever you want related to that lecture uh, research links if you want to make it into links you can make put it uh, uh, use shift command t to make it into rich format or just go to file and save it as rich format right uh, here format make plain text or uh, rich format this allows you to add links and there you go you can do all your research your research and then once you record it you can save it you can replace this file right and that would be your video lecture right and then you can do the same you just can duplicate a bunch of them and then rename them accordingly right lecture two lecture three and all of that right so the thing here is that anything that is still a text file or an rtf file which is rich text format file is are lectures that have not been completed right and that way you know what it's left to do basically everything that is still a text file needs to be recorded why would you want to use this strategy as opposed to all the ones that I've taught you before, like Excel or Trello or Asana or Keynote, well, it's because at the end of the day, you're gonna record all these lectures. They're gonna have to be stored somewhere, which is in your computer, and you're gonna have to use some kind of naming and foldering uh, organizing system. And that system already kind of looks like a, an outline, right? It kind of looks like when you go to, uh, let's say Udemy, and you have a bunch of folders, which you could consider you could assume to be your, well, they're the chapters, right? So each chapter corresponds a module or a, a section, or in this case, in Finder, a folder, and, there, and under each folder, you have the lectures. It's exactly the same as this, right? And if, you got, if I go to Thinkific, it's the same idea. I got all these folders or sections, and inside it, when I click on it, I have the lectures, all right? So the same thing here. When I record all my videos, they're gonna have to go and they have to be organized. Why not organize it as it was a lecture? And if you wanna do not do the effort of creating an outline, then you, you can do this. Just create a bunch of text files and then replace them once you record the lecture. Main disadvantage is that, well, you cannot share this online because it's only living in your computer, but you could, create this online let's say on google drive or dropbox you could create a similar procedure and then you could share that you can access that with uh, from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection you could share that with other people right so this same i'm using finder but you could use any other tool that allows you to create folders and then upload files to those folders so there you go there's another solution for you to create your online course outline thanks for watching to download all the course outline templates shown in this tutorial, click the download button. To learn how to create an online course in 60 minutes, click the learn now button. To subscribe to this YouTube channel, click the subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon.